Welcome back to Fit and Fast. China has the longest history of continuous martial arts tradition. Over the past 2,000 years, hundreds of different styles of Chinese martial arts have developed each one with their own distinctive sets of techniques and ideas. We are here at the Lao Family Hong Boxing Association in Binondo, Manila. And to tell us more about Kung Fu, we have Master Frank Bolte. Master Frank, welcome to the show. Uh, it's nice to be here uh, at your uh, training center. Can you tell us uh, a brief history about your style of Kung Fu, uh, how the Lao family developed it? The style is called Hung Ga Kun, which means Hung Family Boxing Office. Kun means boxing office. Um, originally, the style derived from Shaolin Temple in Fukien. Um, Fukien Temple was burned down 300 years, 300 years ago and the survivors spread all over southern China. One of the survivors was Hung Hei Gun. He's the, said to be the one that created the style Hunga Kun. Okay. Mm. Hunga is a uh, northern style, southern style? Uh, southern, southern Chinese So style. this is uh, lo, a lot of hand technique, yes. a lot of weapons technique, yes. uh, short hand technique, long hand technique. Yes. Low stances. Low stances. And yeah. I understand this uh, shirt that you uh, uh, gave me is uh, the, the name of the yes. school or the name the, of the style? Uh, both. Both. Uh, first, the first character stands for Lao. This is Lao. Then this is uh, family. Family. This is Hung Boxing. Oh. The Lao family teaches to sink out of the box mm -hmm. because Chinese Kung Fu is a traditional, very traditional martial art. But many, many Chinese martial art, they are thinking, let's say, only about their self, mm -hmm. their style. Mm -hmm. They don't like to watch outside. Even we incorporate any techniques. We have our foundation. Okay. But we won't, we won't walk through life, our eyes blindfolded. We look at other things as well, so we can learn from it mm -hmm. and incorporate it. What brings you to the Philippines and to Chinatown? Sometimes I scratch my head and if I think about it, the situation, uh, where am I at? I'm in Chinatown, Manila, Philippines, yes. teaching Kung Fu. My students are Chinese and Filipinos. Yes. <laughs> oh, I could, it could be a movie. <laughs> yes. It was never planned. You know, I some years back, I lived in Hong Kong mm -hmm. with my Sifu. I meet this nice, beautiful Filipina. Which <laughs> oh, now, now it's your wife. Now, That's why you're here. Okay. I'm just very surprised to see a European yes. teaching in Chinatown, Manila. Yes. Chinese martial arts, <laughs> you know, and uh, it's very... It's very rare I meet a person like you. Uh, anyway, let's get back to Kung Fu. Uh, uh, are there weapons training in Hungar Kung Fu? Yes, we have actually all weapons. We have the spear. Spear? Yeah, this with the red. This one? Yes, that's this the one? spear, yes, yes. So what, why, why do you have this red? Uh... Two reasons. First of all, it will... <laughs> Uh, if you stab someone, the blood come out, it will stop here. Oh, will, the blood stops yeah, here, yeah. it doesn't drip Otherwise, all the way. Otherwise, it also distract the eyes. Ah, so when you're attacking... You yes, it will... Uh, ah, kita nyo yan? Hmm? Oh? Oh? <laughs> Nadidistract ba kayo dyan? Nanunood? Oh? <laughs> yeah. We have more complicated weapons like the tiger fork. What do you call this? Tiger fork. Tiger fork. Fork? Yes, because like. it looks like a fork, right? Oh, okay, and what's... This was used originally, it's uh, not... It's not a weapon originally, it's a, a working tool for the farmers. So this is a farm tool? Originally, they... yes. But you know, farmers mostly have goats, sheep, uh, cows or whatever. This is and the heavy. tiger, the tiger will come and ah, that, kill the... Ah, okay. So they don't know how to fight the tiger, so they so, use the fork. To protect? So, yeah, to kill the tiger. So there's a, a, a way of using this? Yes. Different from a sword, different from a spear? Yes, different. Yes, yes. I can later demonstrate or... Oh, great. No I'd like to see that because it's so heavy. It's very heavy, yes. Very heavy. That's why it's more be, advanced. You have to be very, very strong to... Uh, yeah. You have a whole set of movements doing that. Handle this weapon. Don't go away. We'll be, we'll be right back. We'll take a break and uh, we'll be talking again to Master Frank later on. Uh, we will see some of the styles being taught here at uh, Lao Hong Family Boxing Association. Right now, we will show you two traditional styles of Kung Fu, which you've probably seen in many Chinese. <music> Kung
Kung Fu has more than 400 forms and styles. Aside from the popular known Wing Chun, Wushu, and Tai Chi as portrayed in many Chinese martial arts movies, one of the most popular style that is practiced in southern China is Hungar Kun. Hungar Kun means Hung, that's the name, family, Gar is family, Kun means fist or boxing. Uh, it's a southern Chinese martial arts which was which derives from Shaolin Temple in Fukien. But it developed over the time outside of Shaolin as Shaolin was burned down by Qing soldiers in the Qing dynasty. So those survivors spread all over southern China. And what they learned in uh, Shaolin Temple, they developed to, an, to their own styles. So they have different names, mostly given by their own name, like Hunga Kun. The founder, you can his name is Hung Hei Gun. So he gave the name Hunga Kun because he could not use the name Shaolin, because Shaolin was uh, a rebel style. The art and discipline concentrate on open hand techniques and weapons combat. In Hollywood, Hungar moves were showcased recently by martial artist Gordon Liu in the movie Kill Bill 2. Master Frank, a German national, started out with karate and judo in his childhood but was overwhelmed by Hungar Kun when he was introduced into it. It suits me best. I tried many martial arts. I, like I said, judo, karate. Uh, I find that uh, Hungar has the biggest complex. It's, it's very complex. It's something you never stop learning. Even now, I mean, even I teach now, I'm a teacher, but I still learn. I still go to Hong Kong. Every couple of months I visit my Sifu. Sifu means teacher. I go to Hong Kong and uh, learn new things. But also, teaching means learning. What I learned when I was young or uh, even older, I teach now. And when I teach it, I see it different than when I learned. So I learn, again, I learn from my students as well. When I teach my student, I see how he moves. And then I learn something out of it as well, you know. So you never stop learning. It's like forever. Hungar Kun has four pillars. Taming the tiger. Tiger and crane double pattern set. Five animals, five elements, and iron wire. Taming the tiger is said to be the oldest set in Hungar Kun. It emphasizes on stance, conditioning, and solid bridge work. Tiger and crane double pattern set is a signature form of Hungar. It uses the ferocity and strength of the tiger, but at the same time, complements them with the grace and speed of the crane. Iron wire is the highest form of Hungar. From the external and physical, the focus shifts to the internal, mental, and spiritual. A form which de develops your strength, your inner organs, like, uh, I mean, yeah, liver, heart, anything. Because this form, you have different type of breathing, right? And also emotions. You, when you perform that form, uh, sometimes you breathe out and you do a sound. This sound is connected with an emotion. For example, fear, joy. Let's say if I breathe out from here, from the throat, it's short, right? And make it so, it's a short movement, a short sound. This, this is uh, scared, being scared for example, or you laugh. If you laugh a lot, your, your, your stomach hurts. You, you see a comedy, you laugh so much, the next day, oh, my stomach hurt, I laugh so much. But your stomach doesn't hurt, it's the muscles that hurt, you see? So if you um, tense up the muscles a lot, then of course, it's like uh, you have an ache the next day, a sore muscles. That's, um, for example, if I laugh, <laughs> at the same time, I, I tense up the muscles in my stomach. Um, at the same time, I also breathe different, and a different organ will be uh, stimulated. This form is uh, to develop your strength, your breathing. And there's a saying you can get six times as strong as you are when you practice that form every day. This form is comprised solely of movements of the dragon and includes varied vocal intonations with precisely controlled breathing, matched with postures to cultivate, circulate, and extend internal energy. The last pillar is the five animals, five elements, form which introduces 
the student to the five element and five animals of hunger, water. <laughs> Earth. Wood. Metal. Fire. Hungar is very popular in Hong Kong and China, though not so much yet in the Philippines. Actually, here in the Philippines, not as popular because I, I think I'm right now the only one teaching Hungar Kun here in the Philippines. But outside of Let's say in Hong Kong, uh, very, very many, uh, very, so many schools of Hungar Kuen, different lineages, families. Uh, in Germany, where I come from, there are at least 20 schools of Hungar Kuen. Uh, in America, I don't know how many, but very, a lot. This style is quite popular because of, also of the movies. You know, in the 70s, a lot of movie makers and Hong Kong used the style for their movies. But with the dedication and vision of a Sifu like Master Balti, it's only a matter of time before Hungar Kun steadily slipped into the martial arts mainstream. Hungar suits me the best. Of course, I didn't try all the styles, uh, the 400 styles. But from all the styles I learned and I saw, Hungar was the style that where I have the feeling I can develop myself. Not only martial art, also my mind, my character, or everything, um, the stamina or patience, everything will be de developed. And that's what I found in Hungar for myself. That's the Kung Fu style called Hungar. What you've seen was the unarmed methods of Hungar. But there is also an armed component of Hungar, and Master Frank will show us and tell us more about these weapons and how to use them. Master Frank, uh, this is the spear. Yes. Uh, can you describe to us how this, the spear is used and the movements of the spear? Can you explain to the yes. televiewers how it's done before you demonstrate it? Okay, no problem. Uh, the spear is obviously a long-range weapon. Um, it's used, for example, back then, the enemy is on the horse, so the, you would either kill the horse, stab the horse, mm -hmm. so the horse will trap and fall, or the fighter on the horse. So also, the movement is long range, so that means you extend your arm. You can use it with one arm no, or no, two, two arms? arms? You extend two arms okay. and stab. Also, swing. Use oh, the, swing, yeah. yeah you use the butt for uh, hitting. Yes. So, all but mostly for long-range fighting. So this is long-range weapon, yeah, long-range fighting. But you could use it also for short range yes. by twisting and then hit like that or, okay. you know, so... Do you twirl it around? No? Yeah, also, well, you swing it swing sideways. It sideways yeah. or later... I mean, later. the modern wushu, they have yeah. more... More artistic. That's more for the eye. Yes, more artistic. No, not for the... Okay, yes. and this is the tiger fork, uh, yes. the heavy, heavy weapon. Yes. How is the movements done on this weapon? If you fight, for example, a spear fighter, this one. right? Someone will stab you, maybe you block and the spear will come this way, you uh -huh. twist. And it breaks the spear. Breaks the spear down, or yeah. you uh, unarm un the, the, the opponent. Same. Tiger Fork is more than 50 years old. Oh my God, yeah, it's rusty already. Yeah. I mean, you can die with a tetan already. <laughs> <laughs> this comes in and you're, you're yeah. dead, you know? <laughs> but okay. of course, only for demonstration. Yes, no yeah, one will yeah. walk around of with it. Of course, of course, of course. Yeah. But if uh, there's some 
crazy uh, man that comes here and tries to steal anything and he gets stabbed with this. Ah. By the time he gets down the gym, he's dead because it's <laughs> it's all rusty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and this one? Uh, this is the broad sword, the Dao. Th this is the sword that the Chinese Dao. soldiers carry yes. during... This the, the, let's say, the, the soldiers on foot, not the foot? riding. Okay, foot the soldiers course. carry. Yeah, foot soldier. And um, this is a cutting weapon. Okay. Okay, so that means... The sharp side was used for slashing, cutting, and of course you also stab. So the movements are circular and linear? Both. Circular, downwards, upwards, okay. sideways. Then you can cut, uh, stab, and so, and now of course, paré, block. Yes. Right? We have one of your last favorite weapon. Uh, what do you call this? The daggers? Yes, that's the double daggers. Song Bei Sao in Chinese. What's it? What's it called? In Chinese, Song Bei Sao. Song Bei Sao. Yeah. Song Bei Sao. Song Bei Sao. Oh, I learned something new. So, how do you? Uh, what's what's was the movement and the purpose? The weapon uh, was held inwards. Oh, like inwards. This. You don't hold it like this. Oh. Right? Okay. So this, first of all, you can hide the weapon. Oh, this is for the, the demonstration. That's it for them. Yes. For to blind, yes. distract the opponent. But originally, there's not uh, those. So I uh, in, in in the movies, uh, Chinese uh, have long sleeves. Yes. Uh, are these weapons hidden inside example, the sleeves? You could even hide it in the sleeves. Hold both here, and later you have both. But uh, also the way you fight is like this. For you know, you slash. Yes. But you also block and catch. You uh, know. Block and catch. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this is more for close combat. Thanks, uh, Master Frank. Uh, we will see other weapons of Hungar style later with Master Frank. When Fit and Fast returns, we will show you weapons which have become synonymous with Bruce Lee. Keep it here on Fit and Fast on Makisig Channel. back here on fit and fast and right now master frank will explain to us what this uh, training equipment does for hunger style training of kung fu and how it's being used uh, i understand this is like a wooden dummy uh, with uh, my little knowledge of kung fu uh, master frank can you explain to our televiewers what this training equipment does and can you show us a little demonstration yes. on how to use the training equipment um as you said it's a wooden dummy in Chinese, you call it Mok Yung Yan. Um, it's used for conditioning because we use a lot of our forearms for blocking, striking. So when hitting, of course, there will be a pain. That's why it's a conditioning. It, our hands will. So be you cannot strong. practice with the arm guards. Uh, if you put arm guards, you, you can cannot. Do it, but you can, but then it will, will not be conditioned. Correct. <laughs> so we use also the medicine after training. So we won't have any damage or injuries. So it's to strengthen the forearms, yes. strengthen the striking. One, that's one part. Another part is the footwork. This is uh, the leg. So, uh, it's for the leg. So you won't stand open leg in front of the thing. Or even if you fight, you never stand like this. Mm -hmm. So it already teach you always to keep your groin protected by either by your leg or getting out of the center line. So you get a uh, sidestep, you yes. sidestep to the left or yes. to the right. So it also teaches you preciseness and angles. You start with the block. Now this is a double block. This could be one arm and this one arm. Of course, in combat probably you, you only block here or here, not together, because unless someone attack you like that, but the chance not very high. So that's a double block. And then this is an attack. Uh, what? This, for example, someone hit me. I, I hit down his arm and attack his face. With a 
glove Tiger with the palm, with the palm strike or a scratch, or a scratch. Yeah, okay. or grab. yeah grab anything right yeah so now so this is like the man's face here yes, this is the arms of yes, the man and this is the leg the of the man yes, exactly okay so starting block block attack now i get out of the way i block punch block attack attack Block. Oh, it's really conditioning, strengthening the forearm. Oh, you can have long range and short range attacks and blocks. Nice, interesting. And how long does this training go on? Like 10 minutes, 3 minutes, this 4 minutes? This was a set. What I did was a set of yes. movements. So you learn that. And then you repeat, repeat. Over and over. Then is it like you practice on this like three minutes and rest one minute, then three minutes again? For example, you can do it like Like that. round per round, yes. you, you do practice on that. Yes. Thank you, Master Frank. We'll be back again in a little while. Don't go away. Nunchako or Chako has gone a long way since Bruce Lee introduced this obscure weapon. We're back here on Fit and Fast. And earlier, we showed you a weapon made of two short sticks tied together. And now, Master Frank will show us how to wield another wooden weapon. But this time, a long pole. Originally, it was a spear. It was the fifth son out of five uh, seven brothers. He was the only survivor in a battle. So he fled and uh, was seeking shelter in a temple. In a temple is not allowed to bring sharp weapons. So he had to cut off the spearhead. So in, inside this temple, out of the spear movement, he created the pole movements. It's used for striking, thrusting, uh, blocking, swinging, trapping, sweeping, everything. Uh, thank you, Master Frank, for explaining uh, the use and the movements of the long pole. But earlier, uh, I understand that you had uh, like a ceremony. Yes. Uh, can you explain to the televiewers what that ceremony is all about? The student just learns. The disciple will carry on the lineage. So the disciple will pass it down to the next generation. Yes, yes. So today, three of my former students became disciples. Really? Congratulations. Yeah, also to my disciples. There must be a very dedicated students yes. who become, become, they are, become they disciples. Are. That's why we decided to take them as disciples. So in this ceremony, the disciple will kneel down uh, to humble himself, to, to show he will follow what I will teach. Therefore, I will teach him everything I know. No boundaries, everything. And later uh, on in life, he carries on. He has the permission the to yeah. teach and, and become pass a down teacher. what you yes. taught him to exactly. his own student or yes. his own disciple that he yes. chooses. Yes, exactly. Okay, that's a very interesting, Master Frank. And uh, to everyone out there who wants to take lessons under Master Frank, uh, can you can you tell our televiewers where they can get in touch with you? I can be reached under two four two five four three nine landline or on cell phone uh, 0928 4116316 or you can reach me to my email address uh, that's admin at marshall slash club.com and also visit my homepage www.marshall-club.com Apart from that, our school is in Binondo in Sakatero Street inside the Gonghan Athletic Club. Every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday from 6 to 9 p.m. Private lessons are also available. If anyone is interested, just get in touch. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, don't fail to contact Master Frank if you're interested in learning Hungar Kung Fu. And thanks for having me here. Oh, you're uh, welcome.
See you again next week for another episode of Fit and Fast. Only here on your Makisig channel, your macho alternative. This is Monsur Del Rosario saying stay fit, stay fast.